There are so many topics that I wanted to talk about going into the new year, but for whatever reason in my heart lately, I know that I need to speak on opportunities that you thought you missed. 2014 was a big year for me, and instead of going into detail and giving you a timeline of every little thing that happened, I want to talk about how I ended the year, which was on Nellie Bill season finale. As amazing as it feels to have been on national television for who I am and what I do, that's not what's going to inspire you with this video. That's not the part of the story that's going to make you motivated to go after every goal and dream that you have in life. And really it's gonna come from the story and everything that led up to that point. So there are three parts I wanna share with you. The first one was in 2012, I got a call from a publicist asking me if I'd be interested in covering Nelly's celebrity football game in Indianapolis for Super Bowl weekend. And of course, I was down to do it. Who wouldn't do it? And I drove four hours to Indianapolis with my videographer and really good friend Cam. Um, got to the event and the event was cool, but the only problem was Nelly didn't know that he was supposed to do interviews, so I basically had to wing it and make it happen somehow. And I just, I remember it as if it were yesterday where he was done with the game. He, I think he scored the winning touchdown. And of course, all the fans and his team and his security was all crowding around him at the point. And I am running on the field trying to get his attention with Cam behind me and I'm holding a mic. So I finally get to him. He's down to do, to do the interview, but I only get two questions. I, at the time, of course, was very disappointed because I left the event and drove all the way back home to Chicago and we ended up not even posting the interview. So that's eight hours of my time, not getting an interview I was excited for and I didn't understand why. Um, so the next thing was last summer. So we're, we're what, two years later, about two years later. Um, BET called me, or they didn't call me, they emailed me to see if I'd be interested in hosting 106 in Park. And of course, if you do know, or you've been following me, or you do know me, you know my big goal is to have my own TV show. So when 106 in Park calls and asks if I'd be interested in hosting, why wouldn't I be interested, especially because it's TV. So the first thing was they asked me for a reel that I didn't have. <laughs> So I stayed up that night picking different parts of my interviews and at the time, I mean, I'm going on five years of doing interviews so you can imagine how long that took me to pick through my best ones. And then I sent that to Terrence who edited my, my video. Thank you Terrence for doing that so last minute. Um, and then I sent the reel to BET. Their team watched the reel and they liked it. So then I made it into, I guess, round two where they asked for an audition tape and um, it, they gave me like the script and all the questions I had to answer. I turned that in and then I get asked to fill out this paperwork which included my name, my shoe size, my shirt size, my social media links, all of this stuff. So you would think, okay, I'm probably gonna get this or I at least have a really good shot considering I made it past all these rounds. No, um, <laughs> I actually just never heard from them ever again. So I never reached out either. So I don't know what happened with that. But what's crazy is with that, um, a month later was when the news broke out that 106 in Park was going to be canceled. And as soon as I found that out, I was thinking, wow, that would have sucked if I moved all the way from LA to New York, was able to host the show, and then it was canceled because then what would I do after that? Move back here and then start over again? I don't know. So then the last part was after all that, I produced a web series that a lot of people probably don't even know that I produced, um, and I can't say what it is because I don't, I'm not really sure what the status is of it, but basically I produced this series and BET actually was interested in picking it up for the network, so they were going to bring it from online to TV, but 
Again, I never really heard back about it then and I just don't think that I probably would have produced it because they probably would have had the BET producers do it. So I wouldn't have gotten the credit anyway. And it's like, all three of these things happen and it all has to do with BET. So I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, I'm supposed to clearly do something with BET, but why wasn't it happening? I just, I didn't understand what it was until last December when I got the call asking if I'd be interested in shooting for Nellyville. And um, Nellyville's a reality show, so usually in reality shows it's dramatic and I wasn't sure, but when I asked what it was for, it wasn't just some little part, like just to be an extra in something or whatever. It was to interview his nephew, who is an upcoming rapper and trying to build his career. So of course I was down to do it. So we shoot the episode and um, I honestly didn't even think it was going to be as big as I thought it would be that I only posted one thing after we shot it saying like, oh, like a shot for Nellyville, it's gonna air December 30th, blah, blah, blah. And I never talked about it again until a couple hours before it aired because again I didn't know how they were gonna make me look in it and I didn't get to see it so I said whatever I posted it and it ended up being one of the best things that could have ever happened to me like they literally just the way it was set up um, it, like just from the beginning where the nephew says that his uncle set up this interview and this could really build his career um, and take his career to the next level. To me doing the interview, I got that lower third, first and last name and everything. And they, they just edited it in a way that it was like, it really showed the world that I can do what I do and I'm really great at it. And it's, ah, uh, like when I think about it, it's just, I get it now. I get why things didn't work before because just basing it off of this situation. Okay, if I got the Nelly interview, that would have been cool. But what makes this even better is I had that interview, but technically I don't even have an interview with Nelly, but I was chosen for the show to be the person who was gonna help build his nephew's career. He picked me to be the person that his nephew did his first interview with. So it's like, that makes no sense. So that's the first part. The second part was, if I got that 106 in Park World, do you really think Nellyville would have picked someone within the BET family to be the person who interviewed the nephew? Absolutely not, because it would have been politics and it would have looked like I just got the role because of my role within the BET network as the host for 106 in Park and not because I can actually do that role. And then the last thing with the production credit for the series, it's just like that's that's not even what I'm known for. There's so many things that I've produced behind the scenes that people have no idea about because my face isn't in it because I'm known for doing the face-to-face -face interviews. So now it's like two years and I've always wondered why didn't it go my way and it's because this is what I was supposed to do with BET. This was the best and this was what was really going to take me to that next level. And that's why I felt the need to make this video. I The lesson I want you guys to take away is that the next time things don't go your way or you don't get what you want, you need to think about how if you had gotten that thing you thought you wanted at the time, you would have missed out on what God has had planned for you since day one, which is always going to be bigger and better than anything you could have ever wanted or imagined. And I get it, that's really hard to accept at times, but I swear when you can just really believe and trust that, you can just go about your life just thinking like, you're good. And that's how I feel right now. I feel like I'm at this point where it's like, everything is just going to work out. And if I don't get something that I want, it's okay because that's not what I was supposed to get. And it's just, it's like lately, I've just been thinking about reminding myself, like what's for you is for you. And there's nothing or no one that can stop or keep something away from you that's meant to be yours. And just knowing that, 
is an awesome feeling because it's like you can't ever lose in the end and I just I know that this year is going to be my big year because I that's a lesson that I needed to learn and again I don't know who this video was for but I just knew someone needed to hear it and I knew that I needed to share my story for you to really just be motivated and inspired to believe me when I say that you never miss an opportunity. And I don't know, if it inspired you, share this message with someone that you think needs to hear it um, and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be bringing you an inspirational video every week because I just feel like with all the preachings and all the notes I take at church and just everything I've been learning, like living through life and my story, it would be so selfish of me to not share those with you. So I hope I can continue to motivate you and I don't know what I'm gonna talk about next week because I just tend to babble about whatever is in my heart. I just know that it's going to inspire you. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys next week.